السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. جزاك الله خير حافظ محمود خطيب. And we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for affording us this golden opportunity to have gathered here this evening in this beautiful house of Almighty God Allah to commemorate the greatest journey in the entire history of humanity and in the entire history of creation. Let us add to the spiritual dimension here tonight and I'm asking you to join me in a short dhikr that Allah can increase the spirituality here that we can become good recipients for the message of tonight. Everyone join me please. Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil Hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil Hasbunallah وَنِعْمَلْ وَكِيلْ حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَلْ وَكِيلْ حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَلْ وَكِيلْ حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ حَسْبُنَا اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ حَسْبُنَا اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ حَسْبُنَا اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير صلى الله عليك يا سيدنا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدنا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك يا سيدنا يا رسول بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we begin in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful all thanks and praises and glory belong only to Allah, the true sovereign of the skies and the earth. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. As a Muslim, I bear witness that there is none of worthy of worship but Allah alone. And Allah has no partner whatsoever. وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ سَيِّدَنَا وَنَبِيَّنَا وَمَوْلَانَا مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And as a Muslim, I bear witness that I believe in all the prophets from Nabi Adam alayhi salam through the prophet Noah, Abraham, John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and the last prophet, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have indeed gathered here on this very auspicious and beautiful evening to commemorate the greatest journey in the history of creation. A journey which took place by the best of creation to the greatest of all, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest, the journey of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Makkah to Mukarramah to Jerusalem and to the highest place the furthest place, a place where no one has ever been, not even the greatest angel, Jibreel alayhi salam, beyond the Sidratul Muntaha, in the beautiful ayat that were read from Suratul Isra, 
Surah Bani Israel, and Surah Al-Najm by Hafiz Mahmud Khatib, in which Almighty Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself explained this journey in the twofold that it is the journey of the Isra, which is the horizontal journey from Makkah to Jerusalem, and the Mi'raj, which is the vertical journey from Jerusalem to the highest beyond the highest of heaven and beyond the Sidratul Muntaha. Since the emergence, and I need to stress this and emphasize this, that we must never, ever, ever forget this, especially as a community here in this Western Cape. Our great forefathers who are buried all around Cape Town, the great Oliya. Sheikh Yusuf Rahmatullah Ali in Fori, Sheikh Abdurrahman Matura on Robben Island, Sheikh Nurul Mubin in Kams Bay, Sheikh Abdurrahman Matibi Shah and Sheikh Abdurrahman Al Qadri in Constantia. All these great awliya, and I'm proud to say that I am a descendant of these great awliya. They are our forefathers and part of the legacy that they live behind for us is the commemoration of great and holy nights, especially the night of tonight. This is the month of Rajab in which we beseech Almighty Allah, Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa ballighna Ramadan. O oh Allah, bless us in this month of Rajab in which we also commemorate this great night of Isra and Mi'raj. And O oh Allah, bless us in the month to come, the month of Sha'ban. Wa Ramadan. And O oh Allah, make us of those fortunate ones who will witness and receive the glorious and blessed month of Ramadan. Amin. May Allah accept our dua, inshallah. So while we look forward for Ramadan and the great night of Laylatul Qadr that is mentioned in the Quran, Tonight, first, we celebrate and commemorate a great holy night also directly make the reference to in the glorious Quran by none other than Allah Rabbul Izza, the Lord of the universe, the creator of all creation, who so majestically declares, Subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa. Bear in mind, Jamaatul Muslimin, that Almighty Allah starts the mention of this miraculous heavenly journey of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Allah knows, who knows the past, the present, and the future, Allah knew already that there's going to come some smart asses. People who are think they are too smart, people who think that they are too intelligent that they will reject this mi'raj. And that's why Allah starts this ayah by making reference, by saying subhan, referring to his divine glory, to his divine grandeur, to his divine majesty. Because subhan refers to Allah who is alone without any defects, without any faults, without any shortcomings, for Allah is Allah, and there is none like Allah. And Allah say, by my grandeur, my divine majesty, I have taken my servant, Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, on this grand journey of the Isra and the Mi'raj. Allah say so. So now with this emergence of foreign ideologies coming and causing ripples, in our beautiful community that we have always been. We have always been a community who commemorate Ruah, the night of Sha'ban, the 15th night of Sha'ban. We had always been a community who commemorated Mi'raj. 
We had always been a community who upheld the beauty of Ramadan with our beautiful putches, with our beautiful dhikrs, with our beautiful azkar, which I've noticed is dying out. Where is that powerful community who had the beautiful munayat and all the beautiful azkar in the month of Ramadan? We are dying and disintegrating as a dynamic community and our youth are falling prey to drugs, to gangsterism, to Satanism, and every evil that you can think of. Unless and until we wake up and appreciate the legacy that was left to us and ensure that this legacy will continue for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, we must lay in our covers for the next 100 and 200 years from now, and Allah must still bless us and flood our covers with nur because we have left behind the legacy that we receive for our future generations. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alamin. So one of the questions asked by these people that declare everything as bida, everything is shirk, and I'm going to speak to you and answer them from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People want to know, is this a special night? Is this night relevant to commemorate? This night has eternal relevance because Allah makes mention of it in the glorious Quran. Allah does not make mention of nonsensical things. Everything in the glorious Quran is relevant for all times. And therefore the mere fact that Allah praised this journey and Allah praised Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah basically goes to pains to explain this journey in the glorious Quran and the Prophet explained this in his beautiful Sunnah. Therefore, this journey and the commemoration of this Miraj holds eternal relevance. So yes, this is a special night. This is a special night for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because we have to understand the context, what led up to this journey of the Miraj. We know that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started preaching the message of Tawheed, the message of the divine oneness of Allah, he was met with severe opposition he was met with persecution, the Prophet and his immediate followers. And they were faced with a two-year boycott. A boycott against them, where at night, no one could bring food for them. No one could do any business dealings with them. At night, the babies used to cry of hunger. The mothers used to cry because there was no milk in their breasts for their babies because they themselves were hungry. And the kuffar was sitting around the campfires, hearing the babies cry, and they used to laugh and mock at the Muslims. I say that the babies and the women and the elderly who were crying 1,500 years ago, they are today rejoicing and laughing in their kuburs because they are experiencing the rahma and the fragrance of Jannatul Firdaus. And those who were laughing at that time, they are today crying because of the azab and the punishment in the grave and Allah's dissatisfaction upon them. So Jamaat al-Muslimin, in that particular boycott, it was so heavy that the person, the closest confidante to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved mother, his great and beloved wife, Sayyidina Khadija al-Kubra, Allah Almighty decreed that she passed away. Our beloved mother, Sayyidina Khadija, passed away. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was devastated. He was sad at the loss of his confidante, the person who stood with him, the person who gave her entire life to him, the person who gave her entire wealth to him and the cause of Islam. She died, she passed away, and the Prophet was devastated. And then also his uncle, his political guardian and protector, Abu Talib, also passed away. The Prophet had a double tragedy. 
And what did the kuffar say? Ya Muhammad, wadda'aka rabbuk. Oh Muhammad, where's your Lord? Where's your God that you're speaking and preaching about? He left you in the lurch. He abandoned you. And because they used the words, wadda'aka rabbuk. Almighty God, Allah responded from the highest of heavens and beyond. Wadduha, wallayli ida saja, ma wadda'aka rabbuka, wa ma qala. Oh my Muhammad, I swear by the noon, by the dawn, and I swear by my majesty, ma wadda'aka rabbuka, wa ma qala. Your Lord did not leave you in the lurch. I will never leave you in the lurch. Allah will never leave us in the lurch. Despite the tragedies that we are faced with today, besides the calamities and the hardships and the challenges that we are facing today, Allah did not leave us in the lurch. Allah's help is very near. Allah's help is nearer than what we think. And Allah promised the Rasul, Wala sofa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. And very soon, O oh my Prophet, I will give you something which will make you extremely elated and extremely happy. The Mufassirin and the scholars of Tafsir say that this ayah makes direct reference to the miraj that Allah has given the Prophet to console and to comfort the Prophet So this is a special event of commemoration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This night is a special event for Jibreel alayhi salam, the Archangel Gabriel, who when Allah Almighty created him, Allah created him with splendor, Allah created him with majesty, and Allah in inspired Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who saw Jibreel on this night and he saw Jibreel in his true form on this night and the night of Laylatul Qadr when he appeared to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the revelation of Iqra in the cave of Hira. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah created Jibreel so magnificently. He is created with 600 wings. 600 wings is the most powerful malaika. He is known in the Christian world as the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit, Jibreel alayhi salam, who is an angel and not part of God. He is, the crea he is part of the creation of Almighty God. And it is said that if Jibreel opened two of his wings and he closed it, only two, he fly a distance which needs to be covered in 70,000 years. This is the might that Allah has given to Jibreel. And when Jibreel realized the splendor and the grandeur how Allah created him, he made two raka'at salat to shukr to Allah. And on this night, Allah told him, O oh, Jibreel, when I created you, you, you performed two raka'at salat to shukr. And every raka'at was as long as 20,000 years. And I've never ever rewarded you for that. Tonight, O oh Jibreel, my reward to you is that you will accompany my beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa on this journey. O oh Jibreel, go to the Jannah and order Malaika Ridwan and the angels to adorn the Jannah. To adorn the Jannah on this day because my beloved is coming to see the Jannah. My beloved will see the mysteries of the entire universe. So yes, this event is special for Jibreel alayhi salam. This event is special for a particular creature of Allah which is known as the Burak. The Burak is a horse-like creature with wings. And the very word burak comes from the Arabic word barq, which means lightning. So here we understand that the burak is an animal 
that can travel at the speed of lightning. One moment you can be here, the next moment you can be thousands of miles away. That is the speed that Allah created the Burak with. Now why is this night special for this one Burak? Because there's thousands of Buraks in Jannah. And when Jibreel came in Jannah, he saw thousands of Buraks grazing in the fields of Jannah. And he saw one particular Burak standing one side, crying, looking down and sad, and refused to eat. And Jibreel asked this Burak, Oh Burak, why are you so sad? You are in the Jannah, the garden of bliss. You're supposed to be happy and joyful. And the Burak said, Oh Jibreel, Allah created me and I was always enjoying the Jannah. But one day I heard the mention of the name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And since I heard the mention of that sweet name Muhammad, I can't rest. I can't feel peace. I cannot be at peace. I want to meet this Muhammad. I want him to get onto my back and ride me as his transport. Otherwise, I will never find rest. And Jibreel said to the Burak, tonight your dua is accepted. Come, you must transport the Prophet Wasallam on this great journey. So yes, it is a special night for the great Burak from Jannah. It is a special night for all the prophets. Why? Because when Jibreel brought the Burak to the Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the prophet got onto the Burak. In no time, just like that, the prophet stopped at a certain place and he asked Jibreel, where is this? And Jibreel said, this is Bethlehem, the birthplace of Jesus, Nabi Isa Alayhi Salam. And the Prophet Sallallahu got off from the Burak and he prayed two rakats, shukr to Allah. I went and I visited this place in Bethlehem and there's a stone there which still contains a footprint and it is believed that that footprint is the footprint of Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who stood there and made two rakats. He got onto the Burak again and in no time, the Burak flew over a place which is called Kathibul Ahmar, the Red Hills. And the Prophet looked down and he saw right down there in a grave because the Prophet had that sight. The Prophet had a sight that we ordinary people don't have. I can only see as far as my nose, but my Prophet saw beyond. My prophet saw beyond, and so did many of the awliya. That's why the prophet said, "Ittaqu firasat al-mu'min, fa innahu yanzuru bi nurillah." The Nabi said, "Beware of the awliya and the friends of Allah, because they see with the nur of Allah." And so, when the prophet looked down, he saw this person praying in his grave, and he asked Jibril, who was accompanying. Him and he said, Oh Jibreel, man hada, who is that? And Jibreel said, Hada Musa Kalimullah. That is Nabi Musa alayhi salam who is praying in his grave. No one knew up till then where Nabi Musa alayhi salam was buried. Even if you study the Bible today and the life story of Moses, Nabi Musa stops. In the Old Testament, the Bible just mentioned, and Moses left his people. He went further into the desert, and no one knew what happened to him. So no one knew what happened to Moses, the first person to tell the world exactly where Nabi Musa salam, is buried, is Rasulullah sallallahu sallam, who saw his grave on this particular night. And alhamdulillah, many of the hujaj who were with me in Palestine, the, we had the honor of paying respect to the grave of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Even the Jews up till today, they don't believe that that is the grave of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. But fortunate for us, because if they must believe that, they will make and build up a major city there and we will have very much difficulties in getting to that place. So there is a beautiful masjid 
with the grave of Nabi Musa alayhi salam and a big cemetery right around the masjid there. When we passed there, people looked at the cemetery and they asked me, Sheikh, who's buried there? I said, dead people. Dead people, because they expect me to know everything sometimes. I don't know all those people are buried there. My best answer was, all the people that are buried there, they are dead. <laughs> so yes, from there, the Prophet got back onto the Burak, and the Burak transported him further to the precincts of Masjid al-Aqsa, the Haram in Jerusalem. Please, if you have not been to Jerusalem, do yourself a favor and go and visit the Haram in Jerusalem. The Haram in Jerusalem consists of Masjid al-Aqsa, which has a bluish, grayish dome, and about 100 meters away from there is another masjid with a gold dome that is called the Dome of the Rock. Qubbat al-Sakhra, the Dome of the Rock. The Prophet ﷺ went to Masjid al-Aqsa, and then he went to the Dome of the Rock, which was not there at that time. The Prophet went to that particular place, and lo and behold, as he got there, he found that Allah has arranged like a mini kiyama for all the Prophets. All the Anbiya, all the Prophets of Allah in the form of their Ruh, including Nabi Isa alayhi salam, they all gathered there and they were waiting for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, standing in straight safs and the Malaika standing with them in straight safs and they submit that the Prophet وسلم, is Imam al Anbiya, the Imam of all the Prophets, and the Nabi salam, led them in Salah, two rak'ats of Salah, where today you find the building of the Golden Dome Masjid in Jerusalem. And there also, there also is the footprint of the Prophet. وسلم, because when the Prophet وسلم, started his journey upwards, the stone, wallahi the ulama give an example and the commentary of this and they say the stone started moving as if the stone wanted to move with the Prophet The stone couldn't stand that the Prophet will now separate from it and the Prophet had to say to the stone, Malhan, Malahan, stop, stop. And Allah blessed that stone with the footprint of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which is still there up till today. Allahu Akbar. This is part of the greatness of this journey. So the Prophet was Imamul Anbiya, leading the Salah for all the Prophets, a special gathering. So yes, this is a special night for all the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a special night and a special commemoration and it was a special event for all the malaika. There's millions upon millions of malaika that Allah created. And Allah mentioned in the Quran that some malaika Allah created with two wings. Some malaika Allah created with four wings. Some malaika Allah created with six wings and eight wings. Only Jibreel is the only one with 600 wings. But wherever the Prophet Sallallahu passed, the Malaika in the first heaven, the Malaika in the second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven, the fifth heaven, the sixth heaven, the seventh heaven, every Malaika had joy on their faces and every Malaika was created for the tasbih and the glorification of Almighty Allah as Allah himself said in the Quran. But every single farishta, every single angel, every single malaika, as the Prophet Sallallahu passed them, they smiled, they were joyful, and they all said, Assalamu alayka, ya Sayyidi, ya Habibi, ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Every single malaika, even Israfil alayhi salam, who is an angel of immense magnitude, humongous, 
Allah created him with a trumpet to his mouth. He is the angel who's going to stand there at that place where the footprint of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in Jerusalem today in Masjidul, the gold, golden dome of Masjid. He will stand at that particular place when he will blow the trumpet and everything that exists will be terminated and it will come to an end. This malaika was created with a trumpet to his mouth. When the Holy Prophet wasallam, passed him, he was the one who removed the trumpet from his mouth. And he said, Assalamu alaikum, ya Sayyidi, ya Habibi, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he put the trumpet back to his mouth. Every single malaika, including one particular malaika, everyone was joyful and they smiled. There was one malaika who did not smile. And the Prophet Sallallahu asked Jibreel, who is this? And Jibreel said, Hada Malik. This is the angel, the malaika Malik. He is the keeper of the fire of hell, the fire of Jahannam. And the reason why he's not smiling, he's got no reason to smile. Jahannam is not a joke. Jahannam is not a fairy tale. The Nabi Muhammad sallallahu sallam saw Jannah on this night. He saw Jahannam on this night. And he was at pain to see how certain people go through certain punishments because of certain actions in their lifetime. He saw the punishment of the adulteress and the adulteresses. He saw the punishment of people who abuse their tongues by slandering other people, gossiping other people, character assassination of other people. He saw the different punishments and he also saw the different ni'mas and favors and boons that are awaiting for the muttaqin, for those who fear Allah and live righteous lives. So every malaika, every angel was joyful on this particular night and therefore the miraj was a special and great event for all the malaika. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was greeted by all the angels, he went further and he came at a place called Sidratul Muntaha, mentioned in the Quran. And I'm saying that it is mentioned in the Quran that we can understand that the Miraj is not a fairy tale. The Miraj is not a mere story. It is the greatest event in the history of creation. Because the Prophet came at this place, Sidratul Muntaha, accompanied by the greatest angel, Jibreel alayhi salam, the trusted angel. And Jibreel said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya, I have to stop. Ya Rasulullah, I cannot go further than this. If I take one step beyond this point, I will be burned into ashes. This honor was preserved only for you, Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet Sallallahu went further. And as he came to a certain point, Almighty Allah manifested his divine presence. Allah manifested his divine presence. It doesn't mean that Allah is up there. We don't believe that Allah sits on a chair and looks down. We don't believe that Allah is sitting on a throne somewhere up there because no space can contain Allah. No time can contain Allah. He is the creator of time and space. But Allah chose to bring the Prophet to that point to manifest his divine presence. Like Allah manifested his divine presence to Nabi Musa alayhi salam at the burning bush in the desert. It doesn't mean Allah is in the desert. Allah is omnipresent. He's everywhere. But he manifested his presence there. He preferred and decreed that place. Likewise, the miraj 
of Nabi Yunus alayhi salam, who also had his miraj in the belly of the whale. Allah manifested his greatness to Nabi Yunus alayhi salam in the belly of the whale. So here Almighty Allah manifested his divine presence beyond the Sidratul Muntaha. And I want you to listen very carefully. And I want us to use our power of imagination, our power of thinking that Allah has blessed us with. Can you imagine Allah Almighty, the creator of the universe, manifesting his presence to his most beloved, as if, some scholars say, there was like a hush throughout the universe. All the malaika waiting, only the Prophet wasallam in the presence of Allah. The greatest of creation and the creator. And the Prophet wasallam seeing the nur of Allah, he fell down into sujood. Please listen to this. The Prophet fell down into sujood. And while the Prophet is in sujood, there is a hush throughout the entire kingdom of the universe and beyond. Even the malaika, they were in total hush until Allah said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa habibi. Raise your head, O oh my beloved Rasul. And as the Prophet come up from sujood, he sat on his knees and he greeted Allah. He greeted Allah, At-Tahiyatu, Al-Mubarakatu, As-Salawatu, At-Tayyibatu Lillah. Sounds familiar? Does it sound familiar? Can you see where At-Tahiyat comes from? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the presence of Allah, greeting Allah, and this is how we greet Allah in our Salah, At-Tahiyatu, Al-Mubarakatu, As-Salawatu, At-Tayyibatu Lillah. And Allah responds, Wassalamu alayka, Ayyuhan Nabi, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar. Prophet greet, and the Creator greets back. All the angels, they heard this. They want to be part of this. And they called out, Wassalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin. Oh Allah, accept our salams also. And the salam from all your ibadah, all your ibad, all your servants who are pious and God-fearing, O oh Allah. All of us had a part in this mi'raj. And therefore, yes, this mi'raj is indeed a special event. And how did Allah favor the Prophet? What did Allah present to him? Allah presented to him on this night two mighty things. The first one, Ya Rasulullah, Allah say, Oh my beloved Rasul, my Habib, here is a present for you and your Ummah. It is the present of Salah. The present of Salah. Salah, as Salah to Mi'raj al Mu'min. That our five daily salah is our mi'raj. So up till today, every single day, five times a day, we commemorate the mi'raj. Where do those people come from who say that to commemorate the mi'raj is a bidah? Then they must not make salah. Every single day when you say Allahu Akbar, you are commemorating the Miraj because this is your Miraj. And you read Surah Al Fatiha, which consists of seven ayat Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Malik Yawmiddin. Study Surah Al Fatiha, you'll see the seven verses of Surah Fatiha. So when I say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I'm in the first heaven. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. I'm in the second heaven. Malik Yawmiddin. I'm in the third heaven. Till the last ayah, 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. I'm in the seventh heaven. Amen. Oh Allah, accept my miraj. Five times a day we do this. Until we, in the, we are now in the presence of Allah. Until we go in sujood. And finally as we want to come out of our miraj, we greet Allah exactly like the Prophet did. At-tahiyatu, al-mubarakatu, as-salawatu, at-tayyibatu lillah. Exactly. So this miraj is a special event for each and every believer till the doomsday, the day of judgment. It is an eternal, it has an eternal relevance in our lives. And so when the Prophet ﷺ returned, he returned with the salah and the other gift that Allah gave him was the last ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, Lillahi ma fi sama, with the ending, Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqatalana bi. I want you all of you to read it with me. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqatalana bi. Wa'fu anna waghfir lana warhamna anta maulana fansurna ala alqawmi alkafirin this was the last the only part of the quran that was not revealed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on earth it was given to him beyond the seven heavens on this night of Mi'raj was this part of the Quran. This is the two gifts that Allah Almighty has given to us and this forms part of the treasures of the Arsh and the throne of Almighty Allah. And when the Prophet Sallallahu returned, he told the Kufar and he told the people that I had this special journey last night. And immediately the Kufar said, Muhammad has gone completely crazy and mad. Because the journey from Makkah to Jerusalem alone at that time took six months. The journey. Because they used to travel by caravan. They didn't have our space, our modern spaceships. They didn't have our airplanes. They didn't have our Boeings and our jets that we have today. And our helicopters. It took them six months. Besides that, Muhammad, you say you've been beyond the seven heavens and back. You have gone completely crazy. And they called his friend, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, radiallahu an. And they said, you know, Abu Bakr, your friend has gone crazy. Your Muhammad, your prophet has gone crazy. He said that he's been to Jerusalem and beyond the seven heavens and came back in less than a night, a half the night or quarter of the night. What do you think was the answer of this great person, Sayyidina Abu Bakr? He said to them, and this is the iman that you and I must have. He said to them, if my Habib, my beloved, my Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he say he has been to Jerusalem, he has been beyond the seven heavens and he came back, I absolutely have iman in that and I believe in him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Abu Bakr, you are Abu Bakr as Siddiq. You are Abu Bakr, the truthful one, because you brought Iman in the Miraj. And today, some of us, we think we are too smart, too intelligent. We want to cross-question the almightiness of Allah. And I'm ending, and I'm concluding my talk with a question to myself first and into each and every one of you. Those skeptics who think how is it possible for Allah or how was it possible for the Prophet to go beyond the atmosphere of earth where there was no oxygen? How did he survive? He could have never gone up. Allah started the surah with Subhan for us to think and to call to mind that Allah created us 
from nothing. And then Allah created us into a dirty drop of fluid, a sperm. Each and every one, irrespective of who we think we are, our origin is sperm, a microscopic germ, which Allah implanted in the backbone of our fathers. And Allah brought our mother and father together in the union of love and as a sperm. We, f we, we flowed, what is it, flowed or flewed? What is it? Not flewed, man. <laughs> as a tiny drop of sperm from the backbone of our father, we caused by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take rest onto the wall of the uterus in the blessed wombs of our mothers. And Allah caused us to grow and to develop from that tiny embryo into a fetus. At four months, when our mothers were hamil with us, at four months, Allah blew the ruh in our tiny little growing and developing bodies. And Allah caused us to be born into this physical world and our nourishment, our milk, was waiting for us in the blessed breast of our mothers. And Allah caused us to be born as tiny little babies, growing and developing into infants, into toddlers, into children, into teenagers, into adulthood. And after all those stages of development and growth, you want to cross-question your almighty God, Allah? Foolish man, ignorant man, arrogant man, daring to question almighty Allah, who created us from nothing, leaving us on this earth for a short period, and very soon, we will return back to Allah. So in conclusion, I'm appealing to you as our community and all other communities who are listening to us. Do not these legacies die. Do not these good practices die in our community. Uphold Miraj. Uphold the night of Shabi Barat which we call locally here uh, the night of Ruah. Observe your pujis and your dhikrs in Ramadan. Don't let foreign ideologies dictate to you that this is Bida and that is Bida. We have always been a beautiful community. Let us stay that beautiful community and grow even better as a better community, inshallah that we can leave this beautiful Islam to our children, our great children, and our great, great grandchildren until Qiyamah. As we have gathered here on this beautiful evening in honor of Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm asking you, when I ask you now to stand, don't stand yet, when I ask you to stand, please stand with love. Stand with utmost respect. It is not fard to stand and read salawat on the Prophet. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that whoever say sallallahu ala Muhammad or Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, you just read the salawat. Before the salawat comes out, an angel, a malaika, take that salawat and present it straight to Madina, to Munawwara, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want that when I read salawat and salam upon my prophet, it must be given to him while I'm standing with love and respect because I hope that from this beautiful journey that we have listened to by Sheikh Mahmoud Khatib this afternoon, this beautiful journey of Umrah and Hajj, that Allah must call us to do this ibadah 
but to grant us the golden opportunity to visit Medina and be able to stand in front of his cover. So we stand here and read salawat upon him. And when we're there, we stand in his presence and we greet him. Assalamu alaikum, ya Sayyidi, ya Habibi, ya Rasulullah, when we're in Medina. So Miraj is a great night. It's a holy night. It has eternal relevance. May Allah grant us many, many more good years that we can continue to celebrate and commemorate every great event that holds great lessons for us until the day of judgment. Can we kindly stand? And I will ask Hafiz Yusuf Khan to come forward and lead us in a short salami and salawat. مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله مي مولا يا صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله يا إلهي هر جگا تیری عطا کا ساتھ ہو جب پڑے مشکل شہ مشکل کشا کا ساتھ ہو محمد سید الکونین و ثقالین محمد والفريقين من عرب ومن عجم مولاي صل وسل دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير हिमे सुबह ते बाबे हुई बदता है बारा नूर का सद कले ने नूर का आया है तारा नूर का हो अलहबी बुल्ला दी तुर जशफात हो हो شفاعته لكل هو لمن الأهوال مقتحم مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير हिमे तेरी नस्ले पाक में है बचा बचा नूर का तो है ऐने नूर तेरा सब घराना नूर का या रब्बी बिल मुस्ताफ़ा बल्लग मकार सिदाना या रब्बी बिल فر لنا ما ما ضايع وسع الكرم مولا يا صل لوسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم 
يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه لا يا حبيبي يا محمد يا عروس الخافقيني يا مؤيد يا مماجد يا إمام القبلتين صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم طالع البدر علينا من ثني شكر علينا ما دعا لله داعي صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه Mashallah. Uh, before we make the closing dua, I want you once again to use your power of imagination. Just picture the green dome in Medina. For right underneath that green dome is the cover of Nabi Muhammad. Oh. And as we bring Ya Rasul, I want you to picture that green dome and see in your mind how your salam and salawat is presented to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how Sayyiduna Rasulullah is smiling at us from Medina to Munawwara. Ya Rasul Rasulullah Ya
Allah salam ya Assalamu alayka ya Rasulallah Assalatu wassalamu alayka ya Habiballah Assalatu wassalamu alayka ya Rahmatan lil alameen We ask Hafiz Mahmoud Khatib to make the closing to our place Al-Fatiha All together Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أوصل اللهم ثواب ما قرأنا وبركة نور ما تلونا إلى روح قدس نبينا وحبيبنا وطبيبنا ونورنا محمد صلى الله, عليه صلى الله, الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وإلى أرواه خاصة إلى الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي رضي الله عنهم أجمعين وإلى أرواه خاصة إلى روه أهل العباء والأق أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب كرم الله وجه الكريم وسيد فاتمة الظهراء بنت رسول الله بضعة رسول الله سيدة النساء العالمين وخاصة إلى روح سيدنا إمام حسن وسيدنا إمام حسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وجميع شهداء كربلاء أجمعين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وسكنهم في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وأدخلهم في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وروحهم في الجنة وتجاوز عن سيئاتهم واحشرهم مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين اللهم إنك عفو كريم رحيم حليم تحب العفو فاعف عنا يا كريم آمين. اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم آمين. صراط الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين يا رسول الله انظر حالنا يا حبيب الله اسمع قالنا إننا في بحر هم مغرق خذ يدي سهل لنا أشكالنا وسهل يا إلهي كل صعب بحرمة سيد الأبرار سهل يا رب بالمصطفى وبآله بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم اللهم يسر لنا أمورنا مع الراحة لقلوبنا وأبداننا والسلامة والعافية في ديننا ودنيانا وكلنا صاحبا في سفرنا وخليفة في أهلنا واضمس على وجوه عدائنا يا ربنا يا يا مولانا إنك أنت السميع العليم اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من النار يا مجير يا مجير يا مجير يا الله يا الله يا رب العالمين اللهم افتح لنا بالخير 
الخير واختم لنا بالخير واجعل واقب أمورنا بالخير بيدك الخير والعافية إنك على كل شيء قدير قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحاب وبارك اللهم افتح لنا بالخير واختم لنا بالخير واجعل أواقب أمورنا بالخير بيدك الخير والعافية إنك على كل شيء قدير ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون بفضلك دعوا هم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم في السلام وآخر دعوة هم للحمد لله